down. Yeah, I know. We just started. <laughs> God. Yeah, uh, you got it. Yeah, you, it's now. You got it now. Yeah, we got sound now. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. There we go. We, 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 all right, relax. We were we were we were working up to this. First try. How you doing? Good to see you, people. I'm glad you're all here. Welcome. Uh, Wolf Day podcast time. Uh, we have a bit of a show because uh, there was a direct. Tomorrow. Announced to, to, <laughs> they announced a direct today. It's happening tomorrow. Yes. But here's the thing going to be a lot of coverage of this direct, yes. right? Yeah. Including from me. Yes. I'll be covering this On that other thing you did. On multiple. In, <laughs> I'm going to be covering it at least three times. Yeah. So uh, you got plenty of that. Today, we're going to talk about everything else that has happened yes. because a lot of other things have happened. Yes. Mostly games dying. But mostly games mostly dying. Mostly games dying. A lot of Nintendo stuff that uh, dropped last night because last night they had a little financial reports yes. briefing thing yes. that they have all the time. Uh, so we'll be talking about that stuff. Mm -hmm. But also, a lot of games died. Yes. <laughs> Within the past like 24 we, hours. We talk, I think it was two weeks ago we talked about um, Avengers... Marvel's mm -hmm. Avengers ending its life. We literally did a whole podcast about games that have stopped service. Yes. And then since then, more games have announced. Like, that like a lot. And, and not only a lot, within the span of like four days. Yeah. They all announced they were like either canceled or shutting down service. And it, it runs the gamut from like... Uh, I saw this coming. I didn't see this coming. This is a good way to shut it down. This is a bad way to shut yes. it down. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. And I feel like they're all doing it now to fly under the radar because <laughs> of all of the other news, bigger yeah. news that's happening. So there's that. Anyway, well, you know, you have, you aren't going to get a chance to make Nintendo direct predictions. So no. what are your Nintendo direct predictions? For uh, well, I just saw, I was on Twitter, like doing some last minute, like, looking up stuff mm -hmm. and uh wario 64 posted that um breath of that breath of the wild tears of the kingdom the other one yeah uh -huh. is going up for pre-order okay and it's you know it's 60 bucks mm -hmm. except on the e-shop it's 70 dollars on the e-shop as of now what? as of now i haven't gone any more digging or confirmation on this this is just what's on wario 64's twitter account right now Hold on. Hold hold up here. So, I predict... Releasing in 2023. That's all it says. Yeah. But Was it a different... No, go to his Twitter. Go to Wario64's Twitter account. All right, let me, let me check. That's... I mean, that's a huge deal. I, I mean, mean, I mean, Nintendo is going to do whatever they can to... to yeah. Uh, to make money. And, yeah. and uh, I think... All games now are going up to 60. Oh, my God. All games are going up to 70. Yeah. 70, yeah. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is priced at $69.99 according to the eShop. Yeah. So I think, you know, other retailers like Target, Amazon, Best Buy, they still have it at $60. I think this game, this is going to be the first Nintendo game to launch at $70. I think this is accurate. I think they should at least wait till the next generation. I think That's they should crazy. too, but I think that this game is too big for that. All right. Breath of the Wild, the first one, yeah, should have been a hundred dollars. <laughs> that game is fucking huge. Yeah, game's got a lot in it. Mm -hmm. Sixty dollars for that, and then you got sixty dollars for what else? What's another game that's sixty dollars? That that like is, certainly doesn't deserve it. I mean, uh, I mean, most games don't deserve to be sixty dollars, right? Uh, I mean, there's that new Bayonetta game that's coming out. It doesn't look like a sixty dollars yeah. game. Freaking Pokemon, broken ass Pokemon. Yeah, sixty dollars. That that game costs the same as Breath of the Wild. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, they could get away with charging seventy dollars for this, but God, just wait till the next generation. Yeah. It'll be I less think, of a. It'll be less hurtful if you wait till the next generation. That might be an indication of what the next system is going to be. If this is going to be a seventy dollars game, I think that they might start dropping hints at the not in this direct, but like the future nintendo systems to come right. remember a couple remember like many years ago there was that one e3 where they revealed Watch Dogs and star wars 1313 yeah and those games were obviously ps4 and xbox one yes. games but they couldn't say they were xbox one and ps4 games so they yes. just have to say it's you know vaguely next gen yeah i think we're gonna start to see some things like that they're not gonna they're not gonna say the games are for switch but like fuck it i'll do it 
Prime 4. Yes. It's like the reveal <laughs> Metroid Prime 4. It won't say it's coming for Switch. It'll just say coming soon. Yeah. And it'll look so much better than any, everything that's on the Switch already. You'll be like, is that for Switch 2? And Nintendo's like, we can't say. Yes, I th- I, I completely yeah, I think, agree with that. I think they're going to do that. something like that. Uh, it's worth noting, though, that the Tears of the Kingdom eShop page doesn't have a price anymore at all. Okay. So uh, it's possible that was a mistake. You also can't pre-order it. Well, there's no price on it, but you can't pre-order it from Nintendo right now. Right. So I guess pre-orders will go up tomorrow. Yeah, and I guess we'll get a price reveal tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's not a lot of nintendo first party stuff like at all no so they might be gearing up for another generation and this was uh part of it well i think you know the whole part and this of was i think this was an accident the whole point of this direct is like to reveal like nintendo stuff coming yeah. for the year yeah you know other than tears of the kingdom they don't have anything yeah you know unless they want to drop you know odyssey 2 or whatever i think they'll drop a big game for sure yeah uh Metroid Prime just makes the most sense, but mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're, they're Nintendo. They're going to do wacky shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think we'll at least hear a little bit about Zelda. I, I think they'll save a lot for a, for a dedicated Zelda direct though. But we'll probably get the most we've ever seen of Zelda and then they'll, yeah, they'll do a big one. Yeah. Closer yeah. to release. Uh, they said first half, so probably just one surprise as to Real House. Yeah. They, uh, well, they said, mostly from the first half yeah. which they always do and yeah. then and then they sneak in some other they, stuff they really want to try to temper expectations with this, yeah. these things yeah they 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 will have stuff for later in the year also yeah probably probably like a big drop or, or two but i think you're right they're gonna have stuff that's very clearly not for the switch yeah. it's gonna be hard to tell though because nintendo's really good at making things look good on the switch yeah and i'm sure the next generation isn't gonna be that much better looking yeah. and also it could just be cutscenes. like it could yeah. just be a cutscene that's just a video you know that, yeah. that, that and that's why it looks like that on on in the trailer anyway uh so if you want more on that wait for it to drop and then go to youtube.com slash wolf den or youtube.com slash at nintendo podcast uh when is it it's like if 5 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, which is late. Which is uh, my commute home from work. So I will have to stream it while driving home. Yeah. That's safe. I don't know yet if I'm going to stream it on Twitch. I might. But but I want to try to get a video out as quickly as possible. So I I don't don't know if I want to do that. Um, But yeah, you'll have plenty of Nintendo Direct content to consume this weekend. As for right now... Uh, you, we, we got, oh, wait, let's say a thank you to some people first. Mm-hmm. Got a splash. Thanks for the raid. Uh, Sarge, thanks for the 41 months. Nintendo guy. Hey, it's the guy. Oh, thanks for the prime and rock and Val. Thanks for gifting us up to Kate. Uh, anyway, is this the latest directive ever done? It's very late. What do you mean? Like, like late? 5 PM. I feel like it that's is. very yeah. late. Uh, I know they've done them at like 8 p.m. in Japan. Yeah. Like they've done them late there. But here, it's usually like super early in the morning. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, a lot of free games. Yes. That uh, we got to talk about. Uh, February has just started, and I've somehow spent a lot of money on my credit cards. But I don't have to spend any money on this because <laughs> these games too. are free with your PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Gold memberships. We start, of course, with the good one, Sony. Uh, mm-hmm. Starting today, the first Tuesday of the month. You get uh, Evil Dead, the game, for PS4 and PS5. What, oh. is, well, what is that? I believe it is a... Is it an asymmetrical thing? Isn't it like, I, like I believe, Friday the 13th? Uh, play as a team of four survivors exploring, looting, managing your fears, and finding uh, key items to seal, to seal the breach between worlds and a game inspired by all three Evil Dead films and the TV show Ash vs. Evil Dead. So it's it's more Left 4 Dead. It sounds Friday like 13th. Left 4 Dead, yeah. Um. But, you know, people love them Evil Dead movies. <laughs> I've heard good things about this. Uh, yeah, no, I've heard this is a good one. So, uh, And I believe Bruce Campbell is in it as Ash. So you get the oh, authentic wow. experience. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, uh, I know you're excited for this. Ollie Ollie World for PS4 and PS5. Yes, I have it already uh, sitting on some console. <laughs> I don't remember which console I got it for. But I have it. I haven't touched it yet, yeah. though. But, yeah, I've been wanting to play this. So now I have... I know it's not. I don't. Know, I know I don't have it for PlayStation. Yeah. Now I do. <laughs> um. Next is Destiny Two Beyond Light for PS4 and PS5. So this is an expansion. 
Oh, that's cool. You get the whole expansion. Yes. Uh, Destiny 2 is required to play Beyond Light. It is available to download at no extra cost on the PlayStation. So I Destiny know- 2 is free, I believe. Yes, I did not know it was free to play. Yeah, that happened with Stadia, I think. It's been free to play okay. for like a long time. Yeah. Uh, so Beyond Light is year four expansion. Okay. So, yeah, okay. I think it's like the second. Ex- no, wait. Yeah, it's the second expansion to the game. Okay. There's Shadow Keep, Beyond Light, The Witch Queen, and Lightful. Okay. So we're on Lightful now. This Got game it. has been out for six years. Holy shit. Damn. And lastly, for PS4 only, you get Mafia the Definitive Edition. This is a high high end remake of the original Mafia game mm-hmm. from the PlayStation 2. I've heard this is a very good remake. Okay. Because it's um it's the same it's very much like hits all the same beats as the original game, but like modernizes it heavily. Mm-hmm. So this was a guess the game the other day. Do you do the guess the game? It's like Wordle, but it, you guess the game. No, I didn't I did not. Play it's, guess the game. I don't even play Wordle anymore. Guess the game's really cool. Yeah, because it makes you feel really good. I should. Because you're gonna be really good at yeah. it. <laughs> uh, but they, yeah, they had that mafia the other day. I got today's in one. Oh nice. And it's so it's it it's. Are you doing it right now? I'm doing it guess right now. Guess the dot game. You know what we'll do? I'll I'll show it on uh, on on the stream right now. Mm-mm, that looks like in 64 textures. Does it zoom out? Uh, it? it does. The more you do it, so guess a game, and then you'll do the next one. I think I'll do first. I'll do Super I'll Mario do RPG. Yeah, that's a good guess. Uh, it is not that. Okay, now this looks like a Final Fantasy. Okay. Mm, final. I'll say Fantasy Six. Uh, I can't do math. Oh, oh! Is, are they gonna make me do uh, American the... Six or okay? Submit. No. Oh, now I know. <laughs> what is it? Donkey Kong Country. Yay! You did it. Okay. And you can go back and play older, older. I knew it was a too. SNES game though. I got it in the first one because I was <laughs> like, those that though that bitmap looking yeah. shit. I I know those graphics. I, I knew it was a SNES game, so at least I'll. You know, I like all of my guests were, were SNES games. So. Right, right, right. Uh, anyway, that's it. We got all PlayStation games. Yay. Yes. Yay. So good stuff over on the Sony side of things. Over with the other fucking guys. <laughs> Listen, I love you all know I love praising Microsoft where I can and shitting on Sony where I can. Yeah. This is unacceptable. <laughs> all month long, you get For the King and from the. Uh, the 16th to March 15th, you get Guts and Goals. You know, For the King. Everyone's for favorite. The king. For the King. And again. Which is a $25 game. And Guts and Gold is a $15 game. And again, I don't want to like be too hard on these games just because they're nothing games. That doesn't mean they're bad games. But, you know, it, if you're not offering, you know, higher tier top of the line stuff. You're not really giving people a reason to subscribe to your gold subscription. No, they're phasing this out for sure. A hundred percent. But then at that they point, they care less about this. Cause we talked about this before. What are they, what is gold for? Um, multiplayer, uh, discounts, uh, free games. Mm-hmm. Am I forgetting anything? No. Yeah, that's it. So then essentially, and also a lot of the games that you want to play online. I mean, I mean, Gold was first around to play games online. Yes. That's the only reason people were buying it for, yeah. for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, and that's still the only reason I think people would buy it. Yeah. Uh, now, a lot of games are free to play, and you don't yeah. need it. So there's no reason to have it. It doesn't really make sense. So it why not just roll it into the more expensive tier? Yeah. So, all right. I claimed my For the King. <laughs> Garrison says cloud. No, that's the ultimate. Yes. Uh, subscription that comes with uh, Xbox Game Pass. Yes. I forgot the name of it for a second. I stroked out. That that's what we're saying. They're they're getting rid of games of gold. They're getting rid of Xbox Gold in favor of uh, Game Pass. Which if they, I mean, I, I understand the mentality behind that and why they would want to do that, but then they need to either 
A, lower the price of Xbox Live Gold for people who don't want Game Pass, who just want the multiplayer option. Mm -hmm. Or B, lower the price of Game Pass to make it, you know, or do like a yearly subscription bundle Mm -hmm. so we don't have to pay $15 a month because some people just want to pay it all for all of it at once and move on with their lives. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Also, we have more stuff. PlayStation 5 loses. Yes. So this is is important. Uh, do Do you remember? Um, when PlayStation Five launched, if you were, if you had a PlayStation Plus subscription, they gave you a collection of twenty games. Yeah, included. Kiss those games goodbye. Oh no! Uh, the PlayStation Plus collection is being removed from the service in May 2023, leaving PS5 users only two months to download the included games before they're no longer available free of charge. This news comes alongside the PlayStation Plus monthly games list for free. A sudden and unexpected revelation for those out there who have not yet who have yet to redeem those titles more importantly it will remove an otherwise brilliant perk to the console for new owners it's not the end of the world though if you already if you're already the proud owner of a ps5 you can quickly claim them now which will keep them available to download past may and and for as long as you have an active ps plus subscription that being said if you don't currently have a ps5 and are planning on doing so in the near future it's a good idea to do so with haste before a hefty collection of quality titles are no longer free to download alongside your sub. AKA, when this podcast is over, I need to log into your PS5 so I can claim the games. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. (laughs) Uh, That's a good idea. Yeah, This is one of the best parts about getting a PlayStation 5 was you you all of a sudden got all of these games, but they're all uh, last-gen games. They're all, yeah, they're all PlayStation 4 games, but they're Bloodborne. God of War. Yeah, they're infamous. huge AAA games. The Last of Us Remastered, Until Dawn, Uncharted 4, Arkham Knight, Battlefield 1, Crash uh, Insane Trilogy, yeah. Fallout 4, Mortal Kombat X, Resident Evil 7, Final Fantasy 15, Monster Hunter World. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, the Last Guardian. Looks like Detroit Persona Become Human. Days Gone. Yeah. Huge games. Huge, huge yeah. games. So, uh, that's upsetting. That is very upsetting. Uh, uh, another reason against getting playstation plus like it, it's yeah. you're, you're well i mean playstation plus all, does offer a lot even the essential it offers a lot more than just free games it offers multiplayer it all on ps5 it offers like gameplay help and things like that it offers party chat mm-hmm. um it offers discounts like xbox does. you also need it for the cloud saves i think yes it, yeah. that's a big one you need it for cloud saves whereas xbox you just get that for free yeah. for some reason uh but playstation plus extra and premium and all those come with all of these games i think right well most of these games yeah you know this way like this way like if you don't have extra or premium you can get these games and play them you know as long as you're subscribed and even if you do have extra or premium if any of these games leave that service you still have access to it because you got it beforehand yeah so if you've been thinking about getting a playstation 5 and you want to play any of these games you got to do it soon when is it over when are they getting Uh, rid of it it is ending in may oh you got time you have time you got time but don't don't wait till the last uh you have time to get a playstation 5 or (laughs) you have time to hunt down a friend who owns a playstation 5 and log in yes okay so that's it for your uh free stuff even though some of it's uh it's a bit of a sad uh bit of a sad month yeah i mean we got some good stuff from playstation plus but they also were like sorry we're yeah. we're taking all the other free stuff away yeah oh why don't we talk about uh this while we're at it let's talk about xbox also getting rid of stuff i just deleted it oh uh i put it under the collection all right i didn't up, up, uh didn't update yet there it is oh this yes this is confusing because I went into I went into the marketplace to see, and some games are still up and some games aren't. Okay. Um, this happened like late last week. Oh, we, so it already happened. Yeah. Well, it happened oh, today. It happened today. It was reported on it last week. I didn't. It was like in the middle of the podcast, so we couldn't really comment on it. Mm-hmm. But Microsoft has clarified that an article on its official support website saying that Xbox 360 Marketplace will shut down in May was posted in error. Speaking to IGN. And a Microsoft spokesperson not only said that the article was posted accidentally, but also confirmed that the Xbox 360 marketplace will not be shut down in May 2023. What? This message was posted in error, and we can confirm that the Xbox 360 marketplace will not close in May 2023. 
as a reminder, beginning beginning on February 7, 2023, today, a limited set of games, add-ons, and in-game content will no longer be purchasable in select markets via the Xbox 360 store. The, in the original article being posted on Microsoft's official support page naturally caused some confusion when spotted by a reset error user. We will be closing the Xbox 360 marketplace over the next year, it said. We encourage you to purchase any 360 games or DLC by May of 2023. It was made even more convincing by Microsoft legitimately announcing the removal of some games earlier in February, as mentioned by the spokesperson. More than 40 games, including Dark Souls, The Witcher 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and more will be removed from the digital 360 store on February 7th. <coughs> moving from the 360, perhaps moving on from the 360 perhaps makes some sense as Microsoft has made dozens of these games available on its later consoles although it confirmed that no more titles will be made backwards compatible going forward. So they're not getting rid of the Xbox 360 storefront completely. No. But they're removing a lot of titles from the, from the 360 store itself. Yes, but some of these games you can't get on the Xbox One or Xbox Series store. Now. That's why I was confused. I thought this was about removing Xbox 360 games from the Xbox One or Series storefronts. No. That's uh, what I thought. Well, some of them are removed and some of them aren't now. Mm -hmm. I tried looking some up. The big one that I was curious about was on that list was the 2008 Prince of Persia game. Okay. It's a game I really like, but I never got the DLC for it. And that the DLC has the actual ending. It was back when oh. it was back it was back when you know companies used to like give you the game and then like if you want to see the actual ending, it's ten dollars more. Right, so, right. Because they were trying everything they could to raise the price of games without raising the price. Exactly. Of games. They're still right. kind of doing that. Um, yeah, that's why I just wish they just charge us the full I game. Know, you I know. know? <laughs> um, but anyway, so the DLC is still available, but the game isn't. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, if you want the game, you either have to have bought it already or own it on disc, which Interesting. I did. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, we're losing more functionality of the 360. Yes. Okay. I'm not that upset about it. But it's... but the DLC for Prince of Persia, that's something you will never get. Yeah. Because you can't get that on a disc. Right. I, you know, it's upsetting. Unless there's like a definitive edition. It, or it's something. upsetting because they made such strides to like make these games available on current hardware. Because most of these games are backwards compatible. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you can't. Like, right. They're gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's you, what's uh, upsetting. You, I don't think you can get the Prince of Persia DLC at all. Then The DLC you can. I mean, if that's gone, if it's not on the marketplace, then you're screwed. You can't. The no, no, the DLC is still there. I know. I'm saying if they get rid of that. Oh, yeah. There's no way to that. get yeah, it. There's, there's no, no way, disc yeah. or anything. So... I guess I guess I just gotta drop eight dollars, <laughs> or YouTube the ending, <laughs> or YouTube the ending. But I want I would play it because it was a very good game, right? So that they never made again. No. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a little upsetting, but that's yeah. gonna happen. It's the digital age. Yeah, these companies it is, are gonna but start like, dropping again, stuff. Microsoft has made a big deal about like how everything's gonna carry forward, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden, not everything's gonna carry forward. Right, right. So that is upsetting. Oh, uh, hey, Stinky Linky. Thank you for the prime. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Nintendo again. Yay. Wahoo. Wahoo yippee. Here's something Wah they won't talk about in the direct. They won a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, this was... Str I really am surprised that they won this. Yeah. Uh, remember a story that Nintendo Life ran uh, about some parents in the U.S. who were trying to get their kids to sue Nintendo over Joy-Con drift in a class action lawsuit? Well, it seems like the video game giant came out on top. In November of last year, a federal judge ruled in favor of Nintendo in the Sanchez et al. versus Nintendo of America case. Nintendo was able to prevent the case from going any further thanks to the Switch's uh, end-user license agreement, which uh, disallows lawsuits and requires parties involved to enter a legal arbitration. The parents tried to argue their children weren't bound by the EULA due to their age, but in the end, Nintendo won out when the parents were recognized as the real owners of the system. Uh, this obviously isn't the first time the company has had legal dealings like this. In another victory last year, it scored $2.1 million in a lawsuit against the ROM website. Uh, that's a little different. Yeah. Uh, complaints about Joy-Con drift uh, have previously led Nintendo president uh, Shintaro Furukawa apologizing for the inconvenience at the launch of the company's free repair program. In more recent times, Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser has commented 
about the battle against Joy-Con drift, stating how Nintendo is making continuous improvements. So that I mean, I thought this was for sure a win for people who had Joy-Con drift. Nope, because Nintendo used the classic legal defense of "fuck them kids." <laughs> so, like that's what that's what's really confusing. Uh. It's a clash action lawsuit, which mm-hmm. means that it's just a bunch of lawyers who decided, oh, well, we'll fight this. Yeah. And then they try to get people involved. But why are they involving the the, the kids? That that doesn't make any sense. Like, it, obvi- it, like, it's just the parents bought a system and it doesn't work the way it was intended. I, why is that a problem? It sounds like, you know, these might have been parents who still think that games are for kids. So yeah. they tried to pass it off as their kid's device. Like, you bring kids into anything. This is clearly, like, the lawyers fucking up. Yeah. It's always like you bring kids into something that, like, it attracts attention and they automatically think, like, you can persuade perception because it's a danger to kids or it's screwing with kids or something Yeah, like that. yeah. That's what that is, you know? Well, it's... it's The, the lawyers should have known that. Uh, yeah. A lot of adults are buying this thing too. Yeah. But also, they should have known that it would be a problem if they said that it's the kid's device. Yeah. I think they were trying to. I think that their reasoning was they were trying to get around the EULA by saying that the kids signed the EULA. Yeah. But why does why is the the EULA disallows lawsuits, which is insane. That's a crazy. lot of EULAs do that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh. Why couldn't they enter legal arbitration? Now, I'm not a lawyer, but why couldn't they just do legal arbitration before they do the law? I think they were trying to like jump fast the, track yeah, it. Fast track it. Well, now they should go into arbitration. Yeah. Well, now they probably will, but that's probably not going to go anywhere. That's crazy because yeah. I mean, Nintendo fucked up. Like, how how come didn't this happen with the Red Ring of Death on the Xbox 360? Yeah, but I think Microsoft settled. Okay. Yeah. I'll settle. Nintendo won't settle. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> Well, isn't that what legal arbitration is? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. You arbitrate with them and you go give me some money and they you're, go, okay. You're a big time YouTuber. Call legal legal. Aren't you all <laughs> friends or something? I'll ask them at the next big YouTuber yeah. meeting. <laughs> that like cabal you all go to with your hoodies and like you chant, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> no, that's the other, that's the other meeting. <laughs> uh, still bald. Hey, thanks for the prime. Hey Bob, do you? I have to watch the indie world before I watch the newest direct. No, you have to watch uh, the classic movie The Road. Yes, before you watch yes. uh, the next Nintendo direct. Uh, Spouzik in the chat. I know is your name. Uh, arbitration means each person had to go it alone. You can't group up. That's terrible. Yeah. Wow. Wait. This. So, all right. There's gotta. There's gotta be a way to. So sue like, a business that royally fucks a lot of people. I mean, yeah, you know? there is. It sounds like you got to do it one at a time. <laughs> That's <laughs> horrible. That is terrible. I mean, that means that the onus would be on another big company to do the suing, but there's yeah. no real reason to do that because Nintendo is fixing all of the problems on their own. That's crazy. Yeah. This is a huge L. Yeah. <laughs> this is a no, huge is. L it in is. our legal system that allowed this to happen. Yeah. That allows a you like I understand like a you is gonna disallow lawsuits. Yeah. Because like uh, millions of people have a switch. Mm-hmm. You can't have all of them suing over every little right. thing. Oh, little Timmy ate a Joy-Con and now he's yeah. sick. You know, like stuff like that. But like when something massively fucked up happens, like they, there needs to be some consequences. Yeah uh anyway so yeah eric said uh 30 year old saying huge l (laughs) what's wrong with that there is a very good uh graphic novel called terms and conditions where the illustrator took the terms and conditions of itunes and turned it into a graphic novel oh my fucking god it's it's very funny (laughs) oh my god all right, well, that's that's where the Joy-Con drift is at. Uh, if you have, if you're worried about Joy-Con drift, uh, you can just send your Joy-Con into Nintendo and they'll fix it for free, which yeah. is fine. But uh, unless you have a limited edition one or something, yeah. I wouldn't send that in. Yeah, or and you y- could fix it yourself now with uh, the yeah. Gully Kit. Uh, yeah, learn how to in- install Hall Sense controllers because that yeah. fixes everything. Asterisk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. Anyway. Nintendo's doing fine, though. Nintendo Switch sales yes. are on the decline, but the console has hit a new 
sales milestone. Nintendo has revealed its financial results for the previous nine months ending on December 31st, 2022. And while revenue did experience a dip across the board, the Switch has reached a new milestone. Net sales were down 2% year on year to $9.4 billion, while mobile and IP related income dipped by 2.3%, earning Nintendo $295 million from that section. Nintendo sold 5.22 million base Switch console units during this period versus the 11.79 million during the same period the previous year, a 55.7% drop year on year, according to this briefing. Uh, in comparison, sales of the old LED Switch increased by 92% year on year, going from 3.99 million to 7.69 million units sold nice in 2022. As for the Switch Lite, it saw a 37% drop year on year, Damn. selling just 2 million units um, as opposed to, oh, it doesn't say as opposed to what? Combined, this accounts for 14.91 million Switch consoles sold during this window. Uh, for the future, the company is being cautious and has adjusted its expectations for this year. After hardware sales did not perform as expected during the holiday season, Nintendo estimated that it'll sell 18 million Switch consoles, down from 19 million. And 250 million games down from 200, sorry, 200, 205 million games, 205 million games down from 210 uh, during the full fiscal year, which ends on March 31st, 2023. Okay, we don't have to. All right, well, the, the point, is, the punchline is the console has managed to sell a very expensive, a very impressive 122.5 million units since it launched yes. in 2017. And software sales accounted for. Uh, 994.30 million copies sold in Holy total. Holy shit. In total. This makes the Switch the third best-selling video game console of all time, surpassing the PlayStation 4 and original Game Boy, and now trails behind the PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo DS family of handheld consoles. I wonder if Wikipedia changed their... Uh... Oh, they must have by now. Uh, so, yeah. this I think the PlayStation... Five is 155 million. No, the PlayStation 2 is 155 million. They did change uh, the thing. Right? What's PS2 155? PS2 is 155. Yeah. And DS is 154.02. Yeah. Uh. So. Oh, and Nintendo Switch is hybrid. Yeah. So yeah, Interesting. that's that's the big deal. The everyone every time somebody says Nintendo should just get out of the console business and become a third party publisher they make the best song system of all time. yeah that's that happened with the Wii. it happened with the switch that's a ridiculous uh a take but like now you know why it's taking so long to put out a new system yeah because they're still selling yeah. so much like, like sales are down yeah but like the third best selling video game system of all time sales are down compared to last year which was an insane sales a year like mm -hmm. and sales are only down a very little bit they yeah. almost doubled what yeah. happened last <laughs> they almost took last year and did the exact same thing they're only down like a very little bit yeah. so yeah it's the it's the third best selling console of all time so far they just went above so uh i tweeted about this when i saw it um they went from fifth to third they jumped up above the PlayStation 4 and the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color. Yeah. Now, when I tweeted this, some people were confused why Game Boy and Game Boy Color is the same. Like, because yeah. that seems like a like a cheat. Like, it's cheating to, to yeah. lump them together because it adds more sales. But, I mean, there were a lot of games at the time that were labeled Game Boy Color but still worked on the Game yeah. Boy and, like... There were also a lot of games that were only Game Boy Color games. Yeah. So it was already really confusing. Separating them would also be very confusing. Yeah. I so. also, you know, I would wonder, though, which sold more, Game Boy or Game Boy Color. Probably Game Boy, because that was around for longer. I was going to say Color. Yeah. I, I think the, um, the older video games get, like, the, more, the older the video games industry gets, the more popular it becomes, the more people get involved the bigger the population of the planet is yeah so i think all of those things put together makes it easier to sell consoles these days than it was well you know it definitely makes it easier but you look at like you know because the playstation 3 and 4 have not outsold the ps2 or even the ps1 i don't think mm -hmm. you know it you know just because you know more and more people are playing games now doesn't mean more and more people are buying systems 
Right. You know? Well, it it certain systems. Yeah. They're buying systems, just not all of them. You know, right. there's yeah. a lot of. Uh, well, I don't. I don't want to say there's a lot of competition. I just think it's like PlayStation Three. I mean, didn't just didn't sell that good. Yeah. It just well, wasn't. It, at first, and then it caught up. Yeah, but it still wasn't. But you, it was a rough generation for for some. Right. But I think because like the PlayStation Two was also a DVD player. Yeah. So like that opened up a whole other. That market. was that. Yeah, that was crazy yeah. because it was the best DVD player you could get at yeah. the time. And I mean, the PlayStation Three was the best Blu-ray player you yes, could get. At the but time. like at the but time, it, like it was very expensive. Still, right. People didn't weren't ready to jump over to Blu-ray yet, right. so it wasn't the same situation. Even with the PlayStation Four, like that's outsold the PS Three. But you know, if you didn't have if you stopped playing video games after the PS2, you didn't really, you know, hop back on for a PS4. Yeah. You know, no. A lot of people who bought PS4s were either coming over for, from the PS3 or jumped shipped from Xbox 360 when they saw what they were doing in the Xbox One. The PlayStation 2 being a DVD player really helped it because uh, people who didn't play games bought it. Yeah. And people bought it for the DVD capabilities yeah. and then kept it for its DVD capabilities and only bought games on the PlayStation 2 for two generations after that. Yeah. So, yeah, that there's things like that, like fringe cases where, of course, like, you're not going to be able to compete. Yeah. Uh, that's what I thought about the Wii. I thought the Wii, like, when, when the Switch came out, uh sales were going really good and i was like it, it could never beat the wii because the yeah. wii was such a phenomenon people who didn't play games bought it because it was just it was cheap and yeah, it, it was, was cheap uh, it was like had, it was unique it was know, very easy to get like, into yeah. it had a lot of cool things like wii fit and stuff and yeah. it came with wii sports and whatever uh but the switch just the fact that it's also a, a handheld made it so that everybody in the family could get one yeah. instead of just getting one for the whole family yep so yeah, there's a lot of reasons why the Switch could be the best-selling console of all time, for for sure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, and a bunch of games. A bunch of uh, there's a bunch of games that uh, uh we got sales for games. Too. Yes, yeah. uh, Mario Kart Eight has now sold like uh fifty two fifty two mil. million it's copies. The it is the best-selling game on the Switch. Yes, <laughs> which is crazy because it's not a Switch game. Yeah. Uh, also, they had the sales for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. That is twenty point sixteen million, it, which is the number seven best selling game on the Switch, even though it came out three months ago. And everybody hates it. And everybody hates it. And yeah, it's a shitty game. Yeah. And it's the seventh best selling game on the Switch. Yeah. They will never change. No. <laughs> I mean, we are the problem. I'll read them in order: Mario yeah. Kart 8 Deluxe, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Smash Ultimate, number three, uh, Breath of the Wild, number four. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield is number five. Super Mario Odyssey is number six, and Scarlet and Violet is number seven. Uh, here's an interesting comparison. Uh, Mario Kart on the Wii uh, sold 37.38 million copies during its entire lifetime. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U sold 8.46 uh, million copies. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> So that brings Mario Kart 8 Deluxe up, or that brings Mario Kart 8 in total up to 60 million if you yes. include the Wii U. That's crazy. Yeah. 8 million compared to 52 million. Yeah. It just shows you like the power of the Switch. The power of the user base. Yeah. The power of having a large user ba uh, base. But it also shows you like Nintendo like very much believed in that game. Because like usually yeah. a new system gets a new Mario Kart and they're just like, no, this one's fine. Just put Deluxe at the end of the title. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's unfortunate because it was a great game and not a lot of people yeah. uh, got a chance to play it. Yeah. Also, it came out like right at the beginning of the Switch. Yeah. So it had all that time to to, to get, you know, to, to muster up popularity. Also, uh, it came prepackaged with a lot of Switch units. Yeah, it's the, like the, the default the holiday bundle. Which is a good holiday yeah. bundle. So that also will add to that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, even before it had the bundle, it was... Uh, had one of the biggest attach rates yeah, for any it, game. Yeah, it was always in the top 10. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised with how low Mario Odyssey is on the list. It's number yeah. six, but I would assume that would be up higher. Yeah. That's crazy. Shocking. Anyway. Uh, so, shocking, and Nintendo's doing really good, and that's yeah. why it's taking so long to get a new console or to hear anything about anything that they're doing, because they don't give a fuck. They're doing good. Yeah. They don't need <laughs> to do anything different. Anyway, dis... 
quieted collector. Thank you for the 10 months. And Nin N Nick Tendo, thanks for the subscription. That didn't come up on my stream labs for some reason. Uh, anyway, I'm looking at the chat to see if anybody's got anything cool to say. Uh, the Switch Lite doesn't make a lot of sense to buy right now since Holy Lettuce. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised the Switch Lite dropped in sales because, I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's $200 compared to $300 for a regular Switch and $350 for an OLED. Right. I still think the best idea for most people is the OLED, but $200 for a Switch Lite is a fantastic deal. Yeah, it's definitely good as like a secondary system or uh, like for your kids mm -hmm. or something like that. But I think most people want to switch as like, if not their main system, then like a main system and they would want to yeah. have like just a regular switch. But it's so much cheaper to just, it, it lowers the barrier to entry so much. Oh yeah, you no, just get a does, switch yeah. light and you get the exact same library of games. Yeah. I think also two people might be put off by like, cause not a lot of games are compatible with the switch light because you need the joy cons and TV mode. So, so that shouldn't happen with, there should barely be any games that aren't compatible. There should be, there should, but I think for some people, like the fact that some might not work, yeah, might put people off and want them to, uh, would convince them to go to the next to it, get the regular switch. I suffered from that. It was very annoying. I bought one for our mother, yeah, and it's to play whatever Brain Age is, Doctor yeah. Kiwashima's Brain Training, whatever, yeah, and uh, that didn't work. It doesn't yeah. work with the Switch Lite. Yeah. You need, you, Freaking need a, a Joy-Con. Well, you know, you give about a year or two, just give it to our, my daughter and she can play. That's, it. that's yeah. the plan. Yeah. I've been I've been slowly keeping it updated at our parents' <laughs> house and just leaving it out sometimes. Yeah. Just, you know, maybe someone will pick it up. Yeah. Uh, hey, Wood's in the chat. Hey, Wood. Does Will want to come to my house for Super Bowl Sunday? I would love to. I was already invited to another Super Bowl party. And because it's with a bunch of dads, we're going to go early. And then go put the kids to bed, and then maybe I'll be able to go back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where my life is right now. I'm not coming to a Super Bowl party because I don't want to drive to Pennsylvania. Mm, so, yeah. What is that? But if things change, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll drive over. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. Uh, I don't know how to watch it. How do you watch the Super Bowl? Uh, I think it's going to be on Fox. Okay. Well, how do I watch? I don't have cable. Okay. Um, if you download the Fox TV app on Xbox, okay, uh, log in with mom and dad's cable subscription. Okay, and then you should just be able to stream it. Okay. Now, 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 Verizon knows that I'm gonna do that. Am I? Is the cops gonna show up? Well, I <laughs> I specifically did not say what cable company our parents use. Wood says, I know how you can watch, Bob. Come to my house. I'm not driving <laughs> two and a half hours to watch the fucking Super Bowl. You know what I'm going to do instead? Play Valorant or something. <laughs> Who's in it? Uh, the Eagles and... Cool. All yeah, right. Sick. I know. I know. Awesome. I, I know. who. We have an article about this, too. Oh, we'll hear about it later, then. Okay. Uh... Hey, it's the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs. That's who it is. Chiefs. The Eagles and the Chiefs. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, there's a new Mario poster. Yay. Yay. Look at it. Wow. Here it is. Uh, the only interesting thing about this is that it reveals that the blue shell is a Koopa Troopa. Yes. I mean, isn't that obvious? <laughs> Even Was in the it? Game? Even in the game? Like, they're all, like, there's the red shells and the green shells. Those are different kinds of Koopas. True, but we never see the blue shell. We never see the blue Here shell. Here he is. I think it's just assumed that that's what it is. I and never put that together. You're what we like to call an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, how the dry bones were Koopas at one time, but you don't yeah. want to think about it because well, that don't... means that Koopa died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a poster. It's not a shitty poster. Like no, it's a good poster. Like I... you usually get from movies. It it looks like a regular movie poster i know i can't zoom out again it looks like every movie poster it does. i've ever seen it life. does but it looks like a well put together 
like every movie. It's got a nice out. composition. It's got the it's got the freaking uh, what do you call it the the Fibonacci spiral. Swoop. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that spiral. It's got the good the golden got, ratio. The split. It's got the bisexual lighting as you bisexual lighting. Uh huh. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Shows everyone on there. Donkey Kong has a like a big presence on it, so that makes me think that either he's gonna be a significant part of the movie or like. They want they they want you to know Donkey Kong's in this movie. Uh, they are going hard with Donkey Kong, right? For some reason, hey, maybe we'll get a Donkey Kong game tomorrow. Maybe there you go, like a 3D platform, like a Donkey Kong 64 game or a Donkey Kong Country game. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze sold a lot on the Switch. Yeah, uh, so they could just do another 2D, but they should do like a Kirby. Yeah, I think we talked about this. I think me and Wood talked about this. They should do like a Kirby situation, and just do a 3D. I would like that way more. Yeah, than a con- con- yeah, like game. a Donkey Kong 64 because that was 3D platformer. If it was a 2D platformer, I don't think I would play it. I love 2D platformers, and I think that's why I don't like Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> Donkey- I don't think it's a good platformer. Donkey Kong Country. I mean, <sighs> this is gonna get me a lot of crap. I already so- say I don't like the game. I think it's a shitty. Well, because back then, like. I think those games people were more impressed by like the graphical fidelity you can get out of a Super Nintendo, yeah, than you could than necessarily like the platforming because the platforming, like yeah, it can get tough in spots, but it is fairly basic. You know, it's it's, just... it's yeah, it's basic and the difficulty is stupid. Yeah. At least in I haven't played much of the Super Nintendo one to be honest. The Super Nintendo one feels really basic and, and yeah and, and boring, but like. At the time, there were a lot of platformers like that. It kind of felt a lot like the generic, like Warner Brothers, like yeah. platformers and the Disney platformers that we would get. It just had freaking Donkey Kong on it. Yeah, I definitely think it's it was more of a graphical thing than yeah. anything else with the Donkey Kong games. But like you know, it worked. Those games sold very well. And I've said before that Tropical Freeze. I think the difficulty is like you die, and then you're like, okay, well, I guess I can't do that. Let's yeah. play the whole level again until I get to that part, and then I'll know when to jump. Like, yeah. it's things that you would never have seen coming. It's like a manufactured sort of difficulty. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather have some fun, challenging platforming sections, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, oh, they also dropped the trailer, but I think we talked about that already. Yeah, yeah. this trailer's been out for a while. It's, yeah, it's, they, they show clips and stuff, too, and all oh, right yeah oh yeah this is yeah this is nothing but yeah the, i mean the big deal about the blue shell guy is that they have all of the main characters that we've seen already from like uh and they all have like famous vo- voice actors and then the blue shell yeah which is like we he's haven't just, seen anything from him he's yet. just there he's just there he's like yeah. a new guy so is don't we know isn't there a famous guy playing one of the koopa troopers and that must be the one then uh cast includes chris pride as mario anna taylor joy as peach charlie day as luigi jack black as bowser kiko michael key as toast seth rogan as donkey kong fred armison as cranky kong kevin michael richardson as kamek and sebastian maniscalco as spike yeah okay so we don't have a koopa right interesting blue shell is martinet you don't know that you just made that up if imagine if blue shell talks like video game mario <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that, and then, there needs to be a character that talks like a video game mario. but the problem is that there's a character in it that talks like video game mario you know they're gonna, you're gonna have chris pratt mario say something like oh your voice is annoying yeah. why do you sound like that yeah your voice is stupid I you think, shouldn't talk like that like, I, I think now's a good time to talk about the saturday night live skit with uh uh pedro pascal pedro the- pascal playing mario yeah Trying to make it look like The Last of Us, yeah. but it's Mario Kart. I mean, that was very good. I think his voice was very good. <laughs> I think it was very good for a mid two thousands internet comedy skit. Yeah, I don't think it was that funny <laughs> because, but, like, that's what a lot of mid two thousands internet comedy skits were. What if this game from your childhood, but gritty? Yeah, I mean, there was the, a. It used to be on game trailers. It was a. It was a Super Smash Brothers like dark and gritty Mm -hmm. we're like sonic is living in a box and like mario's got a drinking problem (laughs) oh yeah you know what i'm talking about right wait are you talking about sonic for hire no not sonic for hire no sonic for hire is hysterical yeah sonic for hire is great uh no uh 
what I liked so much about it, I think, was that there was a lot of CG stuff, and they made there will be brawl. That's what it was called. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen. Yeah, that. there was a lot of CG and stuff in the stupid Saturday Night Live skit, and they made it in two days. Yeah, <laughs> so like that was it was very yeah, impressive. No, that was impressive. The jokes were like fine. It was fine. But I I just like Pedro. I think Pedro Pascal did a good job. Yeah, he's great. playing the straight faced he's, man. He's game for anything. Yes. Anyway, and I like when Saturday Night Live uh, makes fun of a show or movie using the actor from the show or movie. Yeah, you know, like what they did with the uh, uh, Matt, the Death Star. Uh, uh, no, the radar technician. The radar yeah. technician. Yeah. That was funny. That was, that was good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Mako Fox, for the 100 bits. Hey, Wolf Bros, I know it's been a while since I've caught a stream, but I've been listening to you on YouTube. I just want to thank you for being my number one podcast for three years at this point. Oh, my God. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, and then Jar- Joran True says, what's up? guys bob i was thrown off today when you uploaded the nintendo podcast i wondered where my wolf den podcast was at yeah so we did nintendo direct predictions and you were saving those so then you uploaded it today. well we couldn't post nintendo direct predictions on thursday <laughs> so we had to just so surprise they kind of forced our yeah. hands there let's talk about Oh, all of the games, all the games that, are that, being that you're canceled. never going to play anymore. Yes. Uh, EA reportedly cancels uh, single player Titanfall Apex Legends projects. This is the most disappointing. This is news sad. so far. Uh, following EA's announcement that it is ending development on Apex Legends Mobile and Battlefield Mobile, there's two other games that are gone. Uh, it is reported <laughs> is reported the publisher has now also canceled an unannounced single player game set in the Titanfall Apex Legends universe. According to Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, who cites th- uh, three people familiar with the matter, uh, says the respawn developed game internally known uh, by the code name TFL or Titanfall Legends uh, was being helmed by creative director Ahmed Alvani, uh, Alavi, sorry, until he left the studio in 2021 to pursue what he calls his next adventure. Prior to, prior to his departure, Alavi uh, had confirmed he was working on a brand new respawn single player adventure, which combined. Uh, with later word from Venture Beats Jeff Grubb that the project was a first-person shooter with focus on mobility and style, suggesting that it was the very same game that has now reportedly been canned. According to Bloomberg, 50 people at Respawn will be affected by the project's cancellation, and EA will attempt to find new positions for them within the company. Uh, where this isn't possible, employees will reportedly be given severance packages and laid off. So, oh my God, goodbye, everybody. Uh, today's news follows confirmation that EA will be shutting down Battlefield Mobile developer Industrial Toys after the game's cancellation, although the publisher has yet to say how many people will lose their jobs as a result of the closure. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, through no fault of their own, these people are losing their jobs. Yeah. That's... I and mean, it's like, you know, EA's like the second biggest game studio in the world. Like, they have all these projects working on. They can, like, I'm sure the next Battlefield needs all the hands it can get. Put these people on Battlefield. Titanfall Legends is such a good name. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's... It, Apex Legends was is still so successful. And it was created off of the back of one of the most unique uh, first-person shooters mm-hmm. of its time. Yeah, that got a bad like you got a really bad deal. You got a really bad deal because it both times came out like and just got destroyed by other yeah. shoot, more popular shooters at the time. But it yeah. was more unique and more fun to play. Yeah, uh, Apex Legends uh, uh, kept that universe alive, and now they want to go back and make the game that started everything, and they can't. Because yeah. EA's like, no, you're not going to make us enough money. Even though, like, doing that will bring more money into Apex. Yeah. Like, I, it's you don't have to go with especially the same formula way, every time. Especially if they can find a way to connect the two games. Yeah. 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 That would be fantastic. You need to you need to find ways to keep your big money maker alive, and that well, would and bring new people. I think it. as we're as we're seeing and as we like go through all these games that are being canceled, you know, the, most of them are live service games. Yeah, and I think we're coming to the end of like that era 
Mm-hmm. Not that there aren't going to be live service games anymore, but like I think studios are realizing that they can't just keep making forever games. Yeah, because they're like, not going to be forever. Yeah, like people only play like a, like one or two. Yeah, if that, like you find your one and you stick with it, and it's for most people, it's Fortnite or it's Apex or it's you know a legacy MMO like World of Warcraft or mm-hmm. you know something like that. Well, these people are sitting around, these these suits at these companies are mm-hmm. sitting around looking at numbers and going, oh, the big games are Battle Royales and live service games. The, one, the biggest money makers are these live service games. Yeah. Let's ma- t- take whatever you're working on and turn it into a live, it service. a live service. They're not realizing that the biggest losses are also live service yeah. games <laughs> because it's just not sustainable yeah. unless you get a huge hit. It's yeah. very lucky to become one of the big money makers. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't hit, you could tank your studio. It's more worth it to make something unique and interesting yes. than to just try to fart something out yeah. to get some money. Yeah. Speaking of unique and interesting and also EA, uh, Knockout City is also getting shut down. Look at this. Uh, today we are announcing that season nine will be the, uh, Knockout City's final season. Then on the morning of June 6, 2023, over two years after our initial launch, all servers around the world will be shut down and the game will no longer be playable. This was an extremely difficult decision for us, but a necessary and important one for our studio. Before this happens, uh, there are a ton of new updates in store. We've got a jam-packed season nine full of all the amazing new content you've come to expect, um, an epic send-off both in and out of the game, and even a private server version on PC so Knockout City can live on forever. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Read on for full explanation of why we're making this decision, what it means for you, how it affects the game, and everything you can look forward to in the next few months. Uh, should I read everything? No, it's, it's literally everything. Not. Yeah. Uh, this see game was find, awesome. Like, I see if I can find highlights. Did you play this game? At I all? did not play this game, but I've heard nothing but good things about this. It game. It was awesome. I mean, it was good for like a like a romp. I don't yeah. know if like I, it's I, worth like grinding out. And I think that's another thing too. Like even the games that are fun are good for like. Like you said, a romp. Yeah. But then, like, you're gonna want to move on to another game, you know? Yeah. It. It. it yeah. It was fun to like play with friends for a little bit, but it wasn't. Yeah. Ex- There's a very good uh, video on YouTube.com/slash Wolfden Clips of us playing this game, and it was a lot of fun. It, yeah. We were fucking around a lot, but yeah, it's 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 good to mess around, but it wasn't good to like. Imagine being good at Knockout City. Like, oh yeah, yeah let me go home after a hard day of work and grind out Knockout <laughs> yeah. City with the bros every night. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, it's just it's a lot of like, you know, what what they've learned from making the game. Uh, February twenty eighth, Knockout City, uh, season nine of Knockout City kicks off with the release of our final planned update, version nine. This will be a twelve week season with six back to back events. Starting on February twenty eighth, all real money transactions will be removed from the game. You no long you will no longer be able to purchase uh, Hollow Bucks, the deluxe bundle or either of the Ninja Turtles bundles on any platform. Oh, the Ninja Turtles were in this game. <laughs> I didn't know that. Ah, to make up for this, uh, we packed every event in Season 9 with rewards for XP, style chips, and thousands of holo bucks. Okay, so they're, they're at least trying to make it up to people for, like, shutting down. And I think, I mean, it sucks that they can't do this for the console version, but uh, releasing a standalone player-hosted version of the game for Windows PC... Uh, so that you can continue to play on your own is like the best thing to do. That's how they should handle all server closures is yeah. they should release something for everybody to play public servers. And if, if you, if you're really feeling it an API so that people can develop their own, yeah. like, like servers to live on forever, but that are public. Or at the very least, here's like... The, here's the Ninja Turtle stuff. You got Bebop, Rock City, you got ooh, Foot Ninjas. Ooh. I don't see Turtles yet. Oh, there, there they, they are. are. There's right. the Turtles. That's awesome. I didn't know oh, that, that was a thing. So cool. The game's really fun. I Yeah, I know. I've heard good things about it, and I guess I gotta play it before it disappears. Mm-hmm. Um, or at the very... Like, if, you're, if you can't make it... I'm thinking about it on console. If you can't make it, um, you know private servers i'm pretty sure you can at least do like a LAN version yeah you know, you use something to like let you pl- like continue playing the game i i mean i don't i don't know how it would work on console but i mean there's got to be a way i mean everything's cross-platform now i mean knockout yeah. city it's not like you get 
advantage for having mouse control. Yeah. You know? It's not like you get an advantage for a, a more FPS and fucking knockout city. Yeah. So why not allow you to use a custom server on, on an Xbox? Yeah. You know? Like what, what's the problem? Uh, Wood says they paid me to do a stream playing this game before it launched. I had a lot of fun playing it, but then it just randomly released out of nowhere. I saw nothing about it after that until now. Well, it was one of those games like it came out and made a big splash and then like nobody really like talked about it again. Yeah. Apparently the turtles were released in January on on the 10th. So it like just happened. Wow. But like a lot of games, like they come out, they make a big splash and they don't. Like, you don't hear about them. It also did have a weird launch. It, like, yeah. launched in, like... It was one of those that, like, launched in alpha, was live the whole time, and then just said, oh, we're out now. Wasn't that also the game where, like, the reveal was very weird because it was, just, like, a bunch of, like, stereotypical video game characters, like, doing interviews? Yes. And I yeah. saw that, and I was like, this game looks like shit. And then, yeah. and then the game came out, and I was like, oh, that was fun. That was yeah. really good. So... And, that's and yeah, it was confusing help. what type of game it was because yeah. I don't know what I was expecting, but that that trailer was I think dumb. People just assumed Fortnite clone. Yeah, and then we were yeah. like, "Oh, it's it's, it's a dodgeball, dodgeball," yeah. and it looked like Fortnite dodgeball because yeah. it was like Fortnite style graphics. Um, yeah, but it was. I mean, I think it's free to play, so you yeah, can try so it out give before it a shot. it's over forever. Yeah. Uh, what else is closing? What else are we losing? Uh, everything else. So Kotaku has a list of 15 games shutting oh down that God. have shut down in 2023. Remember, we're only a month and a half into the year. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Apex Legends Mobile, which we talked about. Babylon's Fall, which we talked about uh, the last time. Oh, uh, we said that will for sure close, and yeah. now it's closing? <laughs> well, no, we said it was closing. Oh, I'm confusing that with something else. Yeah. Uh that's closing. Battlefield Mobile, which we talked about in the previous article, uh, is closing down. Uh, Bravely Default, Brilliant Lights. Square Enix is Bravely Default. This had a couple of sequels, and the, this game is closed. It didn't provide services that satisfied our customers, is what they are saying. Oh, okay. This game. Um, Crime Site? The hell is this? I don't know. Uh, Konami's Konami? Cro- oh. uh, an Among Us like Who Done It social deduction game will shut down on May first. Publisher shared news of the game's official uh, Steam page, citing various unspecified circumstances. In quotes. Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, probably because no one was playing it. Crossfire. Uh, Crossfire X. X. This was the weird game uh, that Remedy was involved with, and like Remedy like makes great games, and. This had this trailer had the slow acoustic guitar cover of X Gonna Give It To You by DMX. Oh, okay. Uh, and it looked bad, and nobody liked it when it <laughs> came out. And everyone was, like, shocked because Remedy made a bad game. And now it's officially going away. I I don't remember this at all. I remember that game. Uh, Death Verse Let It Die. No idea what this no is. No idea. Gung Ho Online Entertainment's free-to-play Battle Royale Hack and Slasher uh, will see its development suspended on July 18th. The publisher shared in a blog post um, saying that although the developers couldn't resolve the underlying problems with lag and matchmaking, the team will redevelop the game to ideally re-release it with significant improvements. Okay, so at least they're planning on uh, doing something with this. Okay, interesting. So that's cool. Uh, Dragon Quest, The Adventure of Die, A Hero's Bond. I didn't even know that. There's so many Dragon Quest games. There are a lot of Dragon Quest that this existed. Uh, Echo VR is shutting down ready at dawn's echo vr i didn't know that, didn't was, a know thing that was a thing either final fantasy 7 the first soldier this was final fantasy or squares final fantasy fortnite knockoff okay uh we talked about this that yes this was closing. yes because we yeah. we talked we were talking about things closing and then we were like oh this one's closing today yeah. it was like the day that we were talking about uh stadia is gone <laughs> what what a picture they decided to choose yeah this. Image Stadia platform content. <laughs> it's, just, it's Snake. They just have yeah. Snake. Worm game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hellfire Tactics. Uh, Jay Waffles free to play card based auto battler. Who the hell's Jay Waffle? Ah, uh, that's the name of this. Jay Waffle Games. Is Jay Waffle a person? It sounds I, like a person. Yes. Knockout City. Nope. We talked about already. Uh, Rumbleverse. This was the one that like people were really upset about i didn't know knockout city was going away i knew rumble versus going away yeah. so i thought i confused the, the two uh epic games uh has announced that it's free to play wrestling battle royale rumble verse is hanging up uh it's latex on february 28th <laughs> developer iron galaxy said in a blog post that players who spent any money in 
at the in-game store are eligible for a refund with information on how to do this wow. in the coming weeks. In a follow-up post, Iron Galaxy has also expressed some interest in bringing the game back, saying we may not we may not have yet uh, seen the end of Rumbleverse. Um, so yeah, that's another one that they said you might see us again. That's crazy that they're giving people their money back from yeah, this. That's because like you're taking that money and you're reinvesting it into the game. Yeah. So like to have it all to that's crazy that they're that they're giving it back yeah but that's great for and i'm pretty sure it's a free-to-play game shut up siri i'm pretty sure it's a free-to-play game i so, think so yeah so they just, they're what they just fucking didn't make any money for this game? Not, yeah but i heard think epic who has a lot of money from other venues couldn't yeah. just funnel money into that i heard it was a very good game yeah. it, it seems pretty similar to knockout city i mean you're not dodgeballing but you're like dashing into people yeah. and beating them up and stuff and uh, it's a uh, battle royale yeah uh, the final game on this list is Spellbreak, a proletarius free-to-play magic shooter, shuttering in early 2023. I would have loved to have given this game a shot. It looks fun. Yeah. Uh, it was a very good concept. Uh, it was basically Fortnite, but with magic. with magic and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but that's a shame that that's going away. Yeah. I a- thought it did go away already. Uh no, going away later this year. Uh, they had like a, year. I thought they had a big like goodbye. I thought the players had like a big goodbye oh, already no. for it. <sighs> Why is Spellbreak shutting down? How about when? Huh? How about it's when? Just, I you know I remember back in the day like when a game had online multiplayer, it just had online multiplayer, or it just was an online multiplayer game. Like the like the whole live service concept wasn't really a thing. It was just a game that you played, and that was it. Yeah, but now I think like. Because they have to be perpetual money makers, and and you know they're trying to make every game a perpetual money maker. Yeah, they're putting too much into uh, continuously getting money from a game. They're, yeah. they're 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 banking on the game always being a cash cow, which is not a good way to no. put it. Should be you release the game, you make money from the sales of the game, mm-hmm. and you coast on that. And hopefully, the more people play it, the yeah. the the more it'll get other people interested. Oh, I see you can play in uh, Unreal Tournament 2004 for for four hours a day. What's that game about? Mm. Oh, you should try it. Download it here. Which isn't to say that you can't sell like DLC or cosmetics or things like that. Right, that'll but keep the game alive think, in the future. I think the problem is develop uh, publishers uh, think that the cosmetics and the DLC is the way to make money. Yeah. So they yeah. focus more on that than they do the actual game itself. Yeah, and I mean a lot of these that's I mean a lot of these games are free to play. Yeah. Plus buy some cosmetics. Yeah. Which is I I think that's a fine business model, but that's that only works if the game is going to have a huge user base. Yeah. And if Otherwise, it, yeah. I mean like a game like uh Knockout City maybe that game should have cost I mean it did cost money at launch, but they had a weird they had a weird system. It was like, like a week after it launched, it was like free up to level twenty yeah. or something bizarre. Oh no, it like launched in alpha, but to get the alpha, you needed to pay. And then when the game actually launched, it was free up to level twenty. Yeah, something really bizarre like that. And that shit is gonna complicate things. Just charge us twenty bucks for the fucking game. We'll pay it, and then hopefully that'll be enough to keep the game open for yeah. as long as you need to anyway or you know just make just make games the way they used to just a single player campaign a multiplayer campaign or single player only or traditional multiplayer only yeah and if it's going to be traditional multiplayer only there better be an offline multiplayer mode in case shit like this happens yeah it's worked for so long but i mean yeah. games constantly the 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 popularity of games constantly change like you know there was a time when team-based shooters were the thing. Yeah. That slowly changed to, like, capture the flag and slowly changed into, like, a, a battle royale. And now we have, like, these weird sort of, like, live service situations where, like, yeah. uh, it's, like, loot-based well, and buying cosmetics and shit. I feel like live service was more so thrusted upon us rather than becoming organically popular. Right. You know? Right. Like, you know, we had your, your standard online multiplayer shooters, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, like, the live service elements of it started, you know, s- 
trickling their way in even into like you know traditional single player games yeah like, like it had like no that. business like halo that business model really had no business i think the, the perfect right. example is avengers that yeah. had no business being a live service game yeah it could have just been a standard single player game but they had to make it a live it service. worked so well for destiny destiny it worked it, it worked the, the the way that they had it structured worked really well i think but, destiny 2 could have been better than it was but i think that th- what they had uh didn't seem egregious at the time but i I feel like you know that's one of those things just because it worked for destiny doesn't mean it's gonna work for every game just because avatar was really good in 3d doesn't mean every movie's got to be 3d you're right you're right bob you just described pixel gun 3d's entire life i don't know what that is (laughs) what is pixel gun 3d uh that sounds fun whatever it is what is this looks like a mobile game this looks like fortnite with a gun what uh, not fortnite it looks like a minecraft with a gun what the fuck is this <laughs> it's a google play store game okay sounds like a game that was trying to uh sounds like a game where they're just trying to see what works for everybody else and just steal from it and make a game out of yeah. it. yeah anyway uh more news Yes. Oh, before we do that, though, thank you to Dark Tide for the 100 bits. Thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom being listed at $70 on Best Buy and GameStop? Yeah, apparently uh, Best Buy delisted Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, GameStop still has it up, I believe, for $70. I didn't know that. So I, we... I thought those had initially had it up for $60. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we know we we, we saw talk, yeah. we talked before about how it was... Uh, Seventy dollars on uh, the eShop. The eShop. Yeah, and we didn't think it was listed anywhere else. I thought it was just a mistake from Nintendo. But if it, other people are listing it, then that's kind of crazy. Yeah. But I'm looking at GameStop. It says seven. It says sixty. Okay. So, so I don't know. Okay. So we won't know anything until tomorrow. Correct. But I think we need to prepare ourselves for the very real possibility that Tears of the Kingdom will be seventy dollars. I still am holding hope that that was a mistake. I think that next generation for sure. Yeah. They're going to start charging $70. All right. Uh, Resident Evil 4 uh, rain, it has rain in it. Yeah. Uh, Resident Evil 4 remake looks awesome. Their words, not mine. Uh, but there is one thing that's throwing people off. The rain. Resident Evil 4 is one of the game's all-time greatest titles. And Capcom has uh, fought desperately to ensure that no one ever forgets that. Uh Blah, blah, blah. Over the last year, Capcom has been showcasing what a Resident Evil 4 remake will bring to the table, and it looks amazing. Visually, it's stunning. The gameplay looks um, super engaging and a perfect evolution of the originals. Eh. Um, <laughs> it has a lot of fun touches for hardcore fans. However, a recent video from Game Informer has many worried about one aspect of the Resident Evil 4 remake. The rain in the game looks quite bad and is even reminiscent of the rain in the recent GTA trilogy which was notorious for launching in a bad it state. It looks fine. The rain itself looks too visible, a, a lo- almost appearing more like snow on a darkened screen. It's thick and there's a lot of it, uh, so it makes the screen feel crowded and just generally unpleasant to look at. This complaint seems to steal a lot of the thunder from the game's otherwise awesome achievements, but social media also likes to amplify things. Um, yeah, it, that is a lot of rain. It's, it's that extra, is a lot of rain. It's, um, yeah, it's they. I feel like if anything, they went overboard with the rain. Yeah, that doesn't. That's not how rain looks. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like, that. There should be less of that. Yeah, it's it's a lot, and I think like you know, better like you it know, should be like at least out of focus. Yeah, you know, you know, games that like feature rain, like like the ones you remember, like they they know how to like you know, it's subtle, you know, but this is like in your face. Yeah, it doesn't look yeah. like like rain should be like blurry and like yeah. you know like unless they're too it's too sharp. Are they trying to go for like hard rain? Because like, but even then, like, yeah, it just looks wrong. Yeah, it just looks wrong. It doesn't look like like a like a. It just looks like random. Oh yeah, someone droplets. down someone's uh later a tweet for like the Resident Evil Two remake had rain in it, and that didn't look like this. That's strange. Yeah. You said it was. Oh, you see that in this? Oh, yeah. Scroll down. Oh God. Uh, there's a lot of tweets. I know. 
Oh, I have to click on it. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Yeah, yes, that's how it should look. Yeah. That's how it should look. Yeah, it looks bad. It's too opaque. Yeah. That's dumb. So, I mean, again, the game's not out yet. I'm sure they can fix it. But at the same time, um, just goes to show you that maybe, you know, perfection shouldn't be touched. <laughs> this is uh, Alex Van Aken playing this game. Yes, we're into the show. We're into the show. Uh, yeah, he's he's the one who brought up, like, I think they overdid it with the rain. I'm like, I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when's that coming out? March? That's a screenshot, though. We were literally watching. Yeah. It's, we were literally watching. Yeah, no, it's, it's a game, it's a gameplay trailer on Game Informer's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, it's coming out March 24th. Okay. Might actually play that one. I'm, I'm going to unfortunately have to play that one. <laughs> Turtle Rock. Already done with Back for Blood? Oh, we forgot to mark? include this in our games canceled. Or shutting down segment. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, back oh, for blood developer. I thought this was. I thought. I thought this was a game in development. No, back for blood developer Turtle Rock has announced that it is ending development on the game as the studio is transitions to its next game. This is another like forever game that is not forever anymore. This this game is. How old is this game? It's like two years old, if anything. October eighth, twenty twenty one. Yeah. Uh, in a blog post, Turtle Rock said it is uh, a pretty small studio for the types of games it makes. As such, the company doesn't have enough developers to keep supporting Black uh, Back for Blood while it also works on another game. Yes, another game. Given this, it's uh, it's time for us to put our heads down, get back in the lab, and get to work on the next big thing. Uh, back for Blood will stay online and functional, and the game remains available through Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Plus. Um, following its launch in October 2021, Turtle Rock supported Back for Blood with three expansions, including Tunnels of Terror, Children of the Worm, and River of Blood. While Turtle Rock has confirmed it's now working on a new game, don't expect the studio to talk about it soon. Um, while we may be quieter in the short term, we promise that we'll be back bigger, bolder, and better than ever. Okay, that explains my confusion a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, it said ends development. Yeah. And, no, and, and it's a game that's been out. Yeah. It's just that they're gonna they're, stop they're working gonna, on it yeah they're gonna stop supporting it basically i mean but they're gonna keep the servers up so that's good so that's yeah good it's news. not as bad yeah. as the other ones it's still i i feel so bad for turtle rock because like ever since left for dead they have not nothing they've done has worked and they yeah. keep just basically making different versions of left for dead <laughs> yeah and like left for dead worked so well for them and everybody's like man i wish i had a game that was like left for dead that i could play right now mm -hmm. and there's so many like that People don't want that. They People just want, think they want that, they but they don't. They just want Left 4 Dead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they make another straight up Left 4 Dead, that might sell a lot. But Valve can't count to three. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. Madden. Okay. This is it the for football, all you sports guys. fans. Madden NFL 23 predicts the Eagles to beat the Chiefs in Super Bowl 50, 5, 6, 7. 57. <laughs> L V I I. Yes. Um so every year so, so yeah, yeah, explain. Every this. every year EA runs a simulation in Madden to see who is going to win uh that year's Super Bowl. Uh this year they predict the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles will beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Um and according to their simulation, um it's going to be 31 to 17. So like heavily in the favor of the Eagles. Aren't they usually pretty good at predicting it um usually i think the past few years they've been very off okay i need to i need to look at uh yeah i want to know how often they are correct because i remember them being correct they used to be spot on mm -hmm. the only two times they um they were incorrect were when the giants won the super bowl <laughs> Uh, okay because nobody likes the giants nobody not expects, even giants fans like yeah, nobody the giants. expects the giants to come out on top okay uh I, I, Wiki, oh let me just go to wikipedia because i know yeah, they have be a list. list somewhere of, of that but like i think i think in recent years they've been like missing the like they've been they haven't been accurate at all Here i forgot go. to say thank you to migs lunar strike 
and John the Fisherman for mm-hmm. the primes. And also 1995 Poppy. I forgot to say thank you to you people. Yeah. So since 2004, EA Sports has run a simulation of the Super Bowl using the latest uh, game in the Madden series and announced the results. The game simulations conducted by EA have correctly pr- predicted 11 out of the last 19 Super Bowl winners. The company accurately predicted the final score for the 25th game, for the 2015 game and other details, including the score of 24-14 to 14 in favor of Seattle in the fourth quarter, despite skepticism with NEA um, that Seattle would lose after a double-digit lead. The predictions were incorrect in 2008, 2011, 2014, 2016, 2018, 2019, 2021, oh, and 2022. <laughs> EA has also released computer-generated description of the simulated games um, as if they were a summary of the real Super Bowl. The results of the simulated games are listed below. So yeah, 11 out of the previous 19 were, uh, were, oh, were right? Yes. Okay, that's uh, pretty good. That's almost uh, 50-50. Okay, so point. never mind. That's it's, it's a little bit more than 50, 50%. Correct. I mean, uh, you, you're basically flipping a coin. Yeah. Basically flipping a coin. I mean, we'll see what happens this year. I mean, what was it? The first few years, again, the ones where the Giants won were like surprises. Yeah. But like, you know, the first few years were like, you know, pretty spot on. And now all of a sudden it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm probably not watching this. We'll see. Long. We'll see this weekend. Hey. That's it for the news. That's all oh, that happened that. this week. Besides the Nintendo Direct that we'll find out about tomorrow. Yep. Uh, hey, it's this time, though. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Uh, this is a fun one. Remember last week when we talked about uh, uh, Cult of the Lamb and Angry Birds? Yes. It's still going. They're at it again. Cult of the Lamb tweeted, Enough, Angry Birds. The Lamb grows tired of these <laughs> games. This could be us, but you play in. And it's the Lamb just hardcore making just out, with the, bird, out with the bird. And there's a lot of saliva and stuff. Nice. Very gross. Very yep. cool. And I like it a lot. And then the Angry Bird didn't answer for like a long time. <laughs> and then they quote tweeted, and I mean, I'll, I could. <laughs> it's the Angry Bird acting yeah. like a live streamer playing Call to the Lamb. All of a sudden, they're best friends now. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, they're they're playing along. Yeah, that's cute. So every all all they they made up. All things are good. Yeah, over over on Twitter. Uh, I want to do an unboxing. I thought this would be okay. fun here's the unboxing first we'll do i went to the p.o box today and i picked up a couple things okay first thing i'll show you is this i got uh more of the gully kit uh uh all sensing all sensing okay the company that is selling them on amazon Uh uh-huh uh sent me these i think okay i forgot the name of the company but i linked to that storefront in my video on it okay Uh, i that was just a coincidence i bought those on my own Mm -hmm. and then at the same time they sent me some so i just didn't realize that that was happening uh they also sent me this i didn't know this was a thing 8-bit dues uh this was like the nes looking controller yeah but this is a year of the rabbit limited edition uh version that's nice so that's really cool do i have the nice one yeah i do yeah back there somewhere take a look at it uh it's beautiful looking so far yeah uh but yeah i have a million of these old 8-bit do controllers uh but this one i don't even think they make that model anymore i don't think so either but now we have a year of the rabbit version very nice let's see here Ooh. Ooh. certificate of authenticity wow <laughs> how many of these were made this is uh Oh my god, am I number six six six? Oh my god, I am. Limited edition in total six six six. Wow. Wait, they only made six hundred and sixty six? Or you have it just says limited edition in total six six six. Interesting. Is it putting a hex on me? Maybe. Uh beautiful. Wow. Very nice. See. And it's gold. Ooh, ooh yeah. It's very cute. Do I have one? One of these? I don't know. I don't know how many eight two controllers I have. You definitely have one of those. I'm somewhere, yeah. Uh, I have one more thing that I picked up in the P.O. box that I thought would be very interesting to to pull out and open. And here it is. It's in high oh. plain sight. <laughs> I saw that, and I'm like, I have questions. So, 
as you can see, is from Sideshow Collectibles. Yes. I paid money for this. <laughs> I think I remember you telling me about this. This is... Now, I don't know where I'm going to put this is, is the problem. I also don't know how much of a pain in the ass this is going to be to open. Oh, you're going to need help with this. Oh, and I can just do it. Okay. Good thing it's recycling day. This is going to go right in the garden. Yeah. I guess I'm not keeping this box. No. <laughs> oh, good gravy. Oh, good gravy. Uh, does it have a graphic? Oh. On the other side. <laughs> It's Darth, Darth Vader. Vader. It's, it's Darth, Darth Vader, Vader, everybody. From Revenge of the Sith. Is it Revenge of the Sith? No. I mean, it might as well be. He's on Mustafar. Yeah. Oh, God. There's still so much packaging. I need help. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Hey, do, keep okay. doing what you're doing. I'm trying here. All right. Hold on. This is going to be great content for the audio podcast. They love it. Hold on. Let me... Okay. You got it. Come on. Jack. Hold on. There we go. We got it. There you go. All right. Come All on. Right. There you go. Can First try. Good. All right. Okay. Let's go over there. Uh, let's go like that. Don't worry. There's more packaging. Okay. Now, I recently rearranged all my Star Wars Black Series figures, and I got them all in my display case. That's where I'm at with my Star Wars. So I got this because I have the Obi-Wan one, which yes, is right, right over there. there. Uh, I, my plan was to have like a TV and stuff in here. Yeah. And to have Obi-Wan on one side and Darth Vader on the other side. And then I realized I have no room. <laughs> so I bought this. And now, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Put it upstairs. Make it the centerpiece of your living room. Um, I already have an arcade cabinet up there. I'll kitchen. Make it. make it the centerpiece yeah. of your kitchen. My wife's gonna kill me. I still, I'm still on a quest to like put a Cobra Commander figure in every room of the house. I still don't know how I'm gonna put that in <laughs> the bedroom. I did put the Winter Soldier in the bedroom because my wife thinks he's hot. Company's gotta st stop doing styrofoam. Yeah. I'm sick of this styrofoam. Well, I mean, Literally. something like that. How are you going to keep it protected? Literally anything else. I'll tell you what companies need to stop doing. And by companies, I specifically mean Hasbro. Plastic-free packaging. Don't do that. Nobody likes that. I get you're trying to save the environment, but it could take the hit. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you, you got to put them together. Yeah, but it's like, it should be yeah. just going on a base, I think. Yeah. Was that Vader or is that that's just his cape? This is just his cape. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hold that. Okay. It's like who's a millennial in the chat? You remember Legends of the Hidden Temple? We're putting together the Shrine of the Silver Monkey right now. Oh god. Oh. oh there's a oh, million god. pieces. Alright. Ah nah, it's easy. Okay. Well, it's a good thing we know what Darth Vader looks like, otherwise this would be very hard. Yes. Where's the base? Oh, this is the base. Yeah. Oh, God, it's heavy. Oh, Just like shit. the Obi-Wan was heavy. Yeah. This is, again, Sideshow Collectibles. Sideshow Collectibles. money for this. Uh, make very good stuff. Make very high quality stuff. Make Which very stuff? expensive stuff. Very expensive. This was, I think, only $600. Only? Only. Okay. I thought it was more than that. I, please say that again so mom can hear it. <laughs> So this goes here. And it is literally like the shrine of the silver monkey. Yeah. You know, a McFarlane Toys revealed a, a Dick Grayson Robin figure today in the classic outfit, but it's McFarlane um, shop exclusive, so I have to buy it from them. It's $23 and $13 for shipping, and I don't want to pay $13 for shipping, so I'm not going to get the figure. Oh That's where I'm at. Mr. Uh, I can drop $600 on a statue of Darth Vader. I thought look nice we need the head I mean, that's a little bit battle torn it's gonna look nice obviously oh you need the cape first yeah okay now let's try to do this without breaking breaking it, literally everything around us i got it i got it yeah okay there you go no okay. head it should be magnetic yeah, yeah. look at that Ooh. and then we got oh what the hell this is 
Is that more cape? He's got a lot of capes. We're only putting it uh, a little bit together here. Okay. I got a... I'm not going to do the full together here. I got a lightsaber arm. Lightsaber arm. Okay, we do have a lightsaber. Yeah. We do have... Oh, we're going to do the fire lightsaber <laughs> for sure. The worst part about this is all of the pieces that are just going to be friggin' hanging around now. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't really do it with this, but I got... A wow! There it is. I'm trying to figure out if this is Sebastian Shaw or Hayden Christensen face. More Hayden Christensen, I think. So, I mean, the Obi-Wan that I have... Yeah. ...came with both heads. Yeah. Uh, One of them looked like a mix between Ewan McGregor and uh, Alec Guinness. Yeah. Uh, one of them just looks like Alec Guinness. Right. I used to have the mix... But the hair got a little fucked up. Yeah. Now I just have Alec Guinness. I think it looks good. Still. Looks good. Yeah. Bob, zoom in. I can't really zoom in. Yeah, I can. I think I can do this. What is he standing on? Is that, oh, that's an X-Wing uh, Oh, no, we're kind of zoomed in all the way. Yeah. This is, this, is, this is what you get. This is what it is, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Very nice. Oh, I love it so much. Now, Hasbro make a Black Series version of this so I can afford it. <laughs> uh but can it play retro games? <laughs> <laughs> it can play Doom. Bob was going to put Doom on it. Yes. Oh, now I have so much shit. <laughs> anyway. Uh, hey, we're going to talk to you people real quick. Yeah. Darth Vader's over here. Yeah, sorry when people left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast or on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. George McFarlane decided to watch again just to hear will vamp while the stream was down and i was not disappointed oh yeah that happened yeah i hope you like talking about indiana jones because i'm gonna be doing that a lot this year uh i don't have it open yet uh zay hey bob i just had a question about coffee i have an espresso maker it's not the most high quality one but it's all i really need and can't afford to take a mortgage out on a better one is there any you. is there anything i can do to make sure i'm getting the most out of it uh, I make a few cups a day and have been learning little by little how to make my drinks better, but still pack the coffee too tight sometimes. Well, one problem is you didn't tell me what espresso machine you have, <laughs> so it's going to be hard to tell you. Uh, the best thing to do is to weigh the coffee going in and the coffee coming out. So uh, I do 18 grams of ground coffee in the portafilter, and then it's 36 grams of espresso out. And then I put it in an eight ounce cup and I fill the rest with milk for a, for a latte. Uh, that's all you could really do. I mean, uh, oh, and you want it to, you want the shot to last between 20 and 30 seconds. So you weigh the coffee coming out and you time it. So if you can nail between 20 and 30 seconds, it'll probably taste really good. Also, you want to make sure you're just tamping it the same sort of tightness every time don't try not to do it too tight or not tight enough just keep it consistent every time it, it, it doesn't really that part's not as important just make sure you're doing the same exact feeling every time just just kind of put your weight into it and that's about it anyway uh alan scott from last week's wolf den podcast says are you serious with spoiling an episode of the last of us that's less than a week old spoiling it and then saying spoiler warning isn't cute christ i think we were spoiling the game which is like 10 years old at this point. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we spoiled the show yeah, at all. Because like we're not watching the show. Like You've only seen one episode. Well, now seen I've any. seen all three. Okay. Yeah. There's four now. Oh, yeah. No, I haven't seen the fourth. And one. five is going to be on Friday because they don't interfere with the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm but pretty yeah. sure we spoiled the game. Yeah, we spoiled a 10-year-old game. Alan, yeah. you're nobody's favorite Green Lantern. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Megan uh, love it says honestly i thought crystal skull was better than Temple christopher Mar Mar marcone with uh last week <laughs> i'm super early gm guys uh i love your videos and i fall asleep to random podcasts of yours oh thanks dude thank you very thank much you good very morning much. thank you thank you i'd take shia labeouf over short round any day okay now we're gonna talk <laughs> to you people real quick <laughs> that is an interesting take I've never that is that I've, I've, I've i like uh, there's no such thing as a bad take except Megan's. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Mallon says tamp with 13 pounds of pressure. Okay, let me get my little uh, my little tamper with the fucking.
fucking tire gauge on it. All right, we're in the chat. Yeah. Uh, Edward Bova, thanks for the subscription. Short Round is played by an actor named K. Hugh Kwan, who is currently nominated for Best Supporting Actor for his work in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And I hope he wins. Because that would be great. He won something. He won the Golden Globe. Oh, He's been winning a lot of awards. And I hope he wins the Oscar. He did a fantastic he job in that movie. A, yes. So, what's Shia LaBeouf doing? Making bad movies about a, a saint our grandmother used to Yeah, play we it. learned about it. Is, uh, Pedro Pascal. <laughs> so, first of all, our grandmother was all... She was a big fan. She was a big fan girl for this for saint. Padre Pio. Yeah, yes. there was always pictures all over our house. We thought it was Obi Wan Kenobi. We thought it was exactly Obi Wan. They look exactly the same. So now, mm-hmm. whenever I see Obi Wan, I'm like, "That's Padre Pio." Yeah. And he made a movie apparently last year. Yeah. And apparently, it was very, very bad. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, Ed Bova says, "So Bob and Will, what do you think about The Last of Us?" Nick Offerman's video game obsession ended with Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Uh, did you yeah, see that? I saw that. That was funny. I don't like this whole thing where people are like uh, I didn't want the I didn't want video games to take over my life, yeah. so I'll never play any ever again. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a common thing. Like, especially when actors always say that, like, "Oh, I don't play video games, so I get addicted." And like, well, that's a you problem. That's not a video game problem. Yeah, and like, what are you doing in what? Do you, what else are you doing then? Are you sitting around watching movies? Like, yeah, it's the like, same that's the same fucking thing. thing. You're still wasting time doing something. Yeah. Um. You know, it, again, it, like that's a you problem. You it, it could have been drugs, but you picked the safer option. So yeah. I I don't see what the problem is. Especially here. look at something like The Last of Us, which is obviously very culturally impactful. Yeah, that started because of games like Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, actually, literally, because The yeah. Last of Us before that they were making fucking Jack and Daxter. Yeah, it was almost Jack and Daxter. Yeah, and Crash Bandicoot. So like, uh, yeah, the, like. Obviously, video games are culturally impactful. So if you're going to sit yeah. around and watch movies yeah, because of their cultural impact, then... We just talked about how, like, the Switch sold 120-something million consoles. Yeah. And, like, that's, that's a lot. A lot of people play video games. Yeah. So, you know, you're not, you know, cute or funny by saying, like, oh, you, you escaped the addiction. Jamming- Still love your work. Ron Swanson. Majin Jameson says he does woodworking. That is true. He Nick Offerman do- probably actually doesn't watch TV or movies either. Yeah, he just <laughs> he just builds chairs. He just builds shit. <laughs> Did you hear Jared Leto was confirmed for Tron Ares? Ares. Ares. Yeah, that that still doesn't make any sense to me. Because they set up I mean, not that it matters, it's just like I'm convinced. I'm convinced nobody actually likes Tron. They like the idea of Tron. Mm-hmm. Like they like the the concept of the world. And the look and the Daft Punk soundtrack. Right. But like actual movies themselves aren't great. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and like I guess if you want to do a sequel to Tron Legacy, okay, but like they sort of set it one up in Tron Legacy, so I guess they're not gonna do that anymore. I which makes sense because nobody saw Tron Legacy. M. So. Skelton says, hey, Bob, something you didn't mention on the Nintendo podcast that supports a Donkey Kong game is that they specifically called out DK's redesign, even though everyone else was kind of redesigned for the movie. That's true. Yeah. Maybe like Donkey Kong is more noticeably redesigned. Yeah. And I think they just think it's a big deal because Donkey Kong has such a he's like a they they, they for some reason think that Donkey Kong is one of their biggest, most notable IPs. Yeah. So. They want everybody to know that it's it's different in 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 the movie. Yeah, I mean maybe maybe they really are going to build a cinematic universe. The next movie we're getting is Donkey Kong. That'd be so weird. Yeah. I mean it's weird we're getting a Mario Brothers movie to begin with. That is true. Yeah. Bob, check out Strawberry Jam, uh, fan Celeste game. I did. I saw the trailer and I kind of want. I, yeah, actually, it comes out at the end of February. I want to replay Celeste. But yeah, maybe I'll just play that. Fan I like game played instead. it for like a little bit and like never really like delved too deep into it. That's a game I should definitely like try more of. I want to play. They have, there's a lot of ROM hacks, uh, not ROM hacks. There's a lot of like fan made levels and stuff for yeah. Celeste. I'm just afraid that I've forgotten a lot of the later game mechanics. So that's yeah. why I kind of want to replay it. But maybe this fan game will be enough to 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 yeah. reteach me the mechanics. Uh, but but the problem with fan games is sometimes they expect you to know how to play the yeah. game, you know? Uh, 
Dark Spider David. Question for Will. What's your McFarlane Toys collection looking like? Um, hasn't, haven't really added anything to it in a while. Um, I have pre-ordered the Connell Superboy figure, which, uh, will be a nice addition. I want, I, I have like a decent, I have like a vague idea of when I want to stop collecting, but they keep adding like figures that like I want to put in. So like, I want to get the Catwoman that they just revealed because it's like 90s purple suit Catwoman. Mm -hmm. They have the Hush Batman that I want to get. The Dark Knight collection's coming out. And I got to throw out all my Mattel oh, Dark Knight figures. Good Lord. So it's just, it's a never ending cycle. I I haven't gotten one in a long time though. I haven't gotten a McFarlane DC figure in a long time though. So Superboy is going to be the next one and then we'll see. Maybe I can get the other ones on sale or whatever. Eric says, you played the Celeste on the Miu Mini. Uh, yeah, the Pico 8. Uh, I played a little bit. I didn't play through like the whole thing. Uh, also, Bob, you should check out Burn in Love by Pentagon. It's a J-pop song. Okay. In the punkish style you said you liked. Okay. I will, I will open it in a tab. Uh, Tech Man, or any Spawn figures? Surprisingly, yes. I I don't. I have more Spawn figures than I thought I would ever have in my entire life. Uh, it's a dirty habit. Don't collect Spawn because that's an addiction. Once you start collecting Spawn, are there good Spawn stories? Actually, yes. Okay. Like the first like few years of Spawn aren't bad. Some of them are actually very good. Eric says, "Put Vader's saber in your coffee. It'll stay warm. It's there almost go. there." I'm missing stuff. There's like other flames yeah. and stuff that go down here, but I'll finish it later. Yeah, something definitely goes there. Uh, Wood is asking, Bob, what your favorite 5v5 shooter uh, game to play is with the boys on a Tuesday night direct uh, before the new direct. What do you think? Um, Knockout City. Yeah. No. <laughs> Knockout City's 3v3. Ooh. It's Valorant. It's Val He's talking about Valorant. That's yeah, I'll play Valorant. Uh, I gotta eat. I gotta upload the pot. We got a lot going on. Yeah, but after that, then we'll probably play Bowser. I'm hungry. I, like I had dinner, so like I'm hungry. Right? I had an Eggo with Nutella and peanut butter right before we did this. Yo, don't tell my daughter you can put Nutella on a uh, waffle because then that's all she's gonna want. So <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it a secret. Okay. Uh, all right. I mean, we're a little early, but yeah, what else I mean, are we gonna do? Yeah. You know? you you want, you want me to talk more about my action figure collection? I can do that. You can do I, that. I can vamp. What do you want? Do you want to know? Indiana I'm, Jones. I'm, do you have any Indiana Jones figures? I pre-ordered. Um, so here's my plan for the Indiana Jones figures. Oh, okay. I here's what I definitely want. I want Indiana Jones. Okay. Which I have pre-ordered. I have regular ass Raiders of the Lost Ark Indiana Jones pre-ordered. I want uh, Temple of Doom Indiana Jones because that's battle damaged. And I uh, think that looks really cool. Also, I have, remember Red Robin, the restaurant in Lebanon? Yes. <laughs> there was a poster of him from that movie, like with the shirt ripped up and stuff. And I just like always have fond memories of that poster. So I want an action figure to commemorate that poster. So those two for sure. Uh, short round just to annoy Megan. And I'm going to get... Uh, Mary... But they have a short round figure? Yeah, they're going to have a short round figure. And I'm going to get uh, Marion Ravenwood because... The first Halloween my wife and I spent together, we were Indian Marion. But my plan is because the build a figure in this set is going to be the Ark of the Covenant, and I'm going to have two pieces. I don't necessarily want to build the Ark of the Covenant, but I feel like they're going to make me. Okay. So I know this line is not going to sell well because Indiana Jones like is not a big action figure line. It's not going to sell very well. So when all the other toys go on clearance, maybe I'll get them. And I can build the Ark of the Covenant. But those are the one Indy. Uh, Raiders Indy, Temple Indy, Short Round, and Marion. Those are the four I'm definitely gonna get. Wow. Yeah, I have. You have to, when you when you collect action figures, you have to have a plan. Like going in, you need to like cut yourself off at a certain point. Because oh, you're not me. Gonna, otherwise, you're just gonna keep collecting. Not like, me. I'm almost done with GI Joe. Can't even get the head off. I collect GI Joe Classified, and I have. Aside from Serpentor, which I finally just pre-ordered, even though it's going to cost a lot of money, and um, uh, what's his name? Shipwreck, which isn't up yet for pre-order, but I think it will be soon. Those are the last two I need, and then I can say, like, I'm done. Like, I don't need any more G.I. Joes. Maybe Dude. if 
uh, one goes on clearance, I'll get it. Do the but. outro or read an AJ. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast. So your preferred podcast serves a choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Hotter.com. Thanks for the two months. It's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Nintendo Direct. Check out the main channel. And over here on Twitch, we'll do something probably. The raid's happening right now. See all you guys right. later. Goodbye. Bye. I forgot the buy button. Is this with? Yeah. Yeah.